I can manage the chaos inside of me. I can't manage it when it's everywhere. I've been going through my old Pinterest saves and by old Pinterest saves, I mean like the past six months, not like all the way back to 2012 because that's a scary place. But I found a dress that I almost made for my wedding. And the only reason I didn't make it is because I just didn't have enough time because it was summertime and it's like a, I'll just show the dress. It's, this is it. I already bought all the fabric. I have everything I need to make the dress. I just need to actually sit down and do it. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna attempt today. Again, sometimes I start with a very clear vision on projects and then I go a completely different direction once the dress is starting to come together. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just kind of my creative process. In this house we craft in pajamas. Okay, I'm about to show you guys something kind of embarrassing. I can't live like this for even one second longer. So even though I'm like trying to start this project, I have to do something about this chaos disaster. Cause like I can manage the chaos inside of me. I can't manage it when it's everywhere. I try not to let my craft space ever get too unmanageable because if I do, then I get super overwhelmed and I'm even more unlikely to clean it up. So I try to maintain a little bit of organization amongst the chaos, if you will. So now I'm just barely getting to this. Totally set myself up to have a full day of sewing. My laundry is going, dinner is cooking in the crock pot. I love me some crock pot chicken. I think this is finally happening. So let's go fabric shopping in my little store. Calling my fabric shelf a store makes me feel better about hoarding fabric because this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how much fabric I actually have. It's a problem. Uh, I'm looking at a pile of stuff over there and I'm gonna address that much later. Anyways, let's go shopping. For the most part, everything is kind of color coordinated in these little cubes. And I mean, some of them are empty. I think this is what I'm looking for. Oh God, okay. Um, I don't wanna like bring the house down while I'm trying to pull this out. This is the Bridal Satin from Fabric Wholesale Direct. I bought this about a year ago. Well, hold on. I bought it like eight months ago because I thought I was gonna make this dress with this fabric for a wedding, my wedding, but then I didn't do it because I ran out of time. So here's like the shiny side. And then there's a matte side, which for whatever reason looks shinier on camera, but I promise you this is matte and that is shiny. But honestly, it's pretty matte. Even the shiny side is pretty matte. And I know that the fabric in the original dress is not bridal satin, it's something else. But this is what I have, so this is what we're gonna use. And we're just gonna go with it and embrace it and hope that it works. So here I have my pieces. I have drafted this pattern a million times and I finally put it down on cardstock at the behest of people in the comments because they were like, you have to preserve your patterns better. And I'm like, I know you're right, but it takes 30 seconds longer than I wanna spend sometimes. But I do have it down on paper this time. This is like a really typical bodice pattern and it's not that hard to pattern, draft, or sew together. And it matches kind of the vibe of the original dress. So this is the pattern I'm gonna use. Let's cut this up and keep watching Drag Race. <laughs> Here's a little bit better view of the pattern. I know how to pattern and how to draft my own patterns and everything, but sometimes I just go with the commercial pattern because they already have done most of the work for you. And I'm lazy. In this case, I've decided to use a pattern that I drafted a while ago and I've used. It's not perfect by any means and you will see in a little bit that it's not even big enough to go around my body correctly, but that's an easy fix. And I'll make a note for next time that I need to extend the back piece out a few more inches. Cutting the pattern pieces out is easy enough. I just did my outer fashion fabric and my inner lining. I didn't do any interfacing this time around, although that probably would have helped it look a little more crispy in a good way, but alas, I soldier on. To form the bodice, I pin the right sides of the right panels together. Sometimes I don't use pins for this step because I have an inflated sense of my sewing skills and I think I'm good enough to not actually pin anything together, but because this is my dream elopement dress, I want to make sure that everything is tip top ship shape and looks intentional. So a million pins later and it's time to continue on this journey. I have the lining cut out and I have the outside fashion fabric cut out. And I already know that this is not going to fit me because I tested it around my rib cage and I'm about this far away from fitting in a zipper. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I do so many dresses with lace up backs is because I get so lazy around fitting them in my body. And fitting a zipper is a million times more tricky complicated than just slapping in a couple of rivets, rivets, than just slapping in a couple of grommets and turning it into 
the lace up back, but I really want this to be a zipper. So I've gone ahead, I've cut a few little extendo pieces for the back panel. Oh shoot, that means I have to cut extendo pieces for like the little fold over top part too. Ah oh, man, you know what? We'll get there when we get there. But for right now, I'm just gonna start sewing together the bodice with these extra little like extendo back parts. You are all cordially invited to this momentous occasion, the changing of the needle. I don't change my needles nearly as often as I should, but because this fabric is like a thicker satin, I wanna make sure that it's like punching through the fabric really nicely and not just like destroying the fabric as it like, you know, sews it together. So, um, commence the ceremonious changing of the needle. A little pomp and circumstance never hurt anyone. After something so exciting and momentous as finally changing out my needle after using it for like six months on like 12 different projects, yikes. My back stitch function on my machine is broken. The little feet guys that pull the fabric through stopped working. I decided to make sure that my stitches were really, really small. That way I didn't have to back stitch and I pinned this panel the opposite way from all of the rest, so now I have to unpick teeny, teeny, teeny little stitches. This machine is busted. I'll take it in to get it fixed, like maybe next week, maybe? <sighs> What the heck? Why? And that was the last time I ever let somebody who didn't really know how to sew use my machine or any of my equipment. Lesson learned and like $100 spent getting it fixed. Luckily I have a backup machine which is my brother SE 1900. I generally just use this machine for decorative stitching and embroidering but it is a fully functional regular sewing machine as well and it will absolutely work to get the job done. The main difference between my machines is that the older broken faff machine doesn't have a computer in it so I can get it to do a lot of things that my brother machine won't do because the brother has like a computer brain. I sewed all the bodice panels together and then I started working on the little fold over top bit, making sure that I iron every single demon out of the fabric at every single step. If you are not pressing your seams and ironing your fabric, now is the time to start. Get in the habit of pressing stuff down and your work will improve so much. Lines look cleaner, edges look crispier, and life is just better when the demon wrinkles aren't there anymore. The dress that I'm basing my dress off of has these long bow ties at the shoulders. Now, because I crave drama in the form of long trains and interesting silhouettes, I have decided to make my bow shoulder tie thingies much longer than the ones in the original dress, which basically just means that I cut out four big long ties that get wider as they reach the end of the tie and then I stitch them together. I flip everything inside out, or right sides in, or however you wanna say it, and then I attach them in between the lining and the fashion fabric layers so that the straps are neatly nested in between the two layers and all the raw edges get encapsulated forever and I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, I may have gotten a little ahead of myself just then, so here I am pinning the straps to the bodice, making sure that everything is even and I feel good about what's about to happen because once the straps and bodice are sewn together, it is a total pain to unpick everything and reset the straps. So I'm doing my absolute best to avoid having to do any of that by simply getting it exactly perfect the right time. As my mentor always said, the best way to get good at something is to do it perfect the first time and never make any mistakes. I need therapy. It's all jokes until one of us has an absolute mental breakdown and all of a sudden you're back in the junior high locker room just dreading having to go out and play volleyball on a team where all the girls act like they're friends to everyone's faces but secretly they all hate each other, but that's besides the point. So I stitched the fashion fabric straps and the lining together and then I understitched the lining. Understitching is a really easy and simple way to elevate your home sewing projects. If you want to learn more about understitching, then just Google it or watch a TikTok. This isn't a tutorial, and if you learn something from this video, that's on you. I'm just here sharing my process. And to share more of my process, what I'm doing here is I've cut out and sewn together the little pieces that will eventually make up the top fold thingy on the top portion of the dress. Like always, I press everything so that it's nice and crispy, and this piece kind of turns into a little tube, so I flip it right sides out, give it another good press, and I set it aside. I've been working on my computer all day and I cannot even look at one more email. Like my eyes are literally burning from looking at the insane amount of emails that I have been answering lately. The day is practically over. Like I have maybe two hours left that I can actually use. And so I'm gonna go work on my dress. I did need to have something to eat first though. So I made a pizza wrap and I thought to myself, don't take this over to where your dress is because it's white and this is pizza sauce and it's just gonna be disastrous. So I sat down here and it was a good freaking call because the first bite, like literally, there's one bite out of this pizza wrap that I have taken. And the first bite, I like did a, like a cheese pull. Uh, it's on my face. Oh my gosh, it's embarrassing. I cheese pulled first bite of my pizza wrap and just like sauce. 
smacked me. It's probably on my shirt. I know it's on the table somewhere. And it was a good call that I decided not to eat it over my work area because that would have just been the dumbest thing of my entire life. And this is instant karma. The fact that I'm not supposed to be eating dairy and this is loaded with mozzarella. So that's for future me to worry about. But present me is presently very happy about the cheese content and the fact that I didn't get pizza sauce on my dress. Anyways. Pro tip, always wash your hands before handling fabrics, especially if they are white or light in color. Moving on to the dress now. I didn't want a full, full circle skirt for this dress, so I cut out a skirt shape that would still be full, but not a complete circle, you know? I press it multiple times, especially since I'm sewing a French seam, which is basically where you sew the fabric wrong sides together, trim the edges, press the seam, and then fold everything right sides together, and sew it again. It basically just encapsulates the raw edge into like a fancy seam so that it doesn't fray, and you don't have to use a serger for the effect. And then all I do is repeat every single one of those steps, but on my lining fabric. I will note that I cut the lining fabric to be significantly shorter than my fashion fabric, and that is for multiple reasons. First, it doesn't need to be as long, and I don't want the underlining layer to peek out when I'm wearing the dress. Secondly, it helps me not use so much fabric. I've been cutting little chunks off of this thrifted bed sheet for a few months now, and by being a little considerate about what I'm cutting off, I can make the fabric last longer. And thirdly, I just straight up wanted to do it this way, and I don't have to explain myself to anyone, especially strangers on the internet! Once both skirts are cut out and sewn, it's time to attach them both together. Again, there are a lot of ways of doing this, and most ways are probably just fine. I went with the sew them together at the top method, and I left the back back seam a little open so I could eventually insert a zipper, and then I just surged the waistline to keep them all together and secure. Moving right on to the part where I pinned the bodice to the skirt. The best way to do this is to just match up the middle fronts of both pieces, and then hope for the best. It usually turns out fine, so don't worry too much, but then it's just a matter of stitching it together. I used my serger on the raw edge, and then I top stitched it all down so that it's really secure and not going to go anywhere. Plus it looks nice. It doesn't fit yet, but I feel like it's got potential. Yeah, if I can just take it in like, I don't know. How much do you think that is? Two inches on each side? I think it's gonna be really cute. The last white zipper. Installing a zipper really isn't as hard as my brain thinks it is. The problem is that it just takes three more brain cells than I have ready and available. Plus I don't really do them very often, so I basically just have to relearn how to do them every single time I decide to install a zip into a dress. Oh no! Man, I crunched that needle and that sucks, but I was looking for this little pouch full of sewing tools and... I found my nail file that I've been looking for for like two months now, so that's great. The fact that you guys are getting two ceremonious changing of the needles in one video really is a treasure. You're so lucky. I sewed the zipper on backwards. First of all, invisible zippers are kind of tricky. Second of all, I don't do them very often, so I need to practice. And third of all, I feel like I'm really trying to rush myself because it's gonna get dark really soon and I just wanna get as far on this project as possible because when it gets dark, I get really sleepy and then I don't really wanna work and I'd rather just eat dinner and go watch a movie on the couch. <laughs> Feeling very motivated and incentivized by the idea of eating dinner and watching a movie on the couch, I unpicked the zipper at lightning speed, reset it the opposite direction, and zipped it through my sewing machine as quick, fast as possible. I even threw in the other side as well. Yeah, that's what I've got. This is one side and this is the other side. Here we go, also this matchup and then this gaping hole right here. So I've got to redo that zipper. That's just not gonna cut it. Like I wasn't intentionally trying to make it look so ugly, but man, did I make it look so ugly. And the thing is, is that like my brain right now, I can't even process how to fix it. Unpick it, small adjustment. I don't know, I'll just do the best I can. Doesn't it kind of feel like we've been here before? Unpicking and resetting the zipper. I know it's good practice, but it's frustrating. But look at that, we got it. I just busted the zipper. Oh shoot, I can feel it's not even... No. Oh my gosh, you will not believe this. I just fixed the zipper. I fixed the zipper because I watched a TikTok and it showed me how to fix it. Game changer. I'm try zipping it up again and this time I'm gonna be super careful. Halfway there. 
I feel like I'm really fighting this project, especially with the zip situation, but it's looking closer and closer to what I envisioned slash saw on Pinterest. When I tried on the dress, I noticed that there was some gaping up in the booby area, and so to fix that, I am just going to sew in a few vertical darts into the bodice. There is no way I'm unpicking the lining and the fashion fabric, so I'm just stitching them directly in, which is not the correct way of fitting a dress, but you can barely tell, and I don't have it in me to do it any other way right now, which is a good indicator that I am almost at the end of my rope with this project. I am so done sewing for today. The amount of frustration that that zipper brought me almost made me crumble. I'm glad I finished to the point that I did because tomorrow all I have to do is hem it. But for right now, all I'm doing is getting some steps in because my brain is just so, it feels like carbonated soda, just like all the bubbles, all the ideas like coming to the top and like it's almost bedtime and I just wanna like focus on one thing and that one thing is this dot because the screen stopped working about two weeks ago. Well, I unplugged it and plugged it back in and now it's working again, hooray. This is where we left off. I worked out this morning and I'm very tired and I feel like I need to go to the chiropractor and just like pop every bone in my body. But instead, we're gonna hem this skirt. Secretly, I'm really afraid of hemming. I just feel like I can never quite get it. And like, I'm sure anybody else looking at anything that I hem is like, yeah, that's fine. But me looking at it, I'm like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that side's too short, that one's a little bulky, that one's ugly. And I need to be kinder to myself, much, much kinder. So in the spirit of being kinder to myself, I'm gonna do this with the most positive attitude that I can absolutely muster. We'll see how it goes. Like I mentioned, I don't really enjoy the hemming process of sewing, but it is an essential step and the only way to get better and more comfortable with it is to do it more often. I think one of the reasons why I don't like it is because my dress form is a little short and so my body feels really uncomfortable while trimming all the fabric. When my sister lived with me, I literally just had her cut all my hems and I really missed that. To do what I wanted to do for the hem of this skirt, I needed an additional circular strip of fabric cut. So I just eyeballed one out of the remaining satin fabric I had on the floor and then I sewed it right sides together to the bottom of my dress and pressed it. This seemed to take forever because while the skirt isn't a full circle it is still quite big and remember I'm doing my best so sometimes that means slowing down and making stuff actually look good. I trimmed the excess fabric off of the hemline and pressed it again and then folded the little strip up and down to encase the raw edge. Then I sewed one last seam all the way around the bottom of the dress, trying to keep everything looking flat and crispy and also trying not to absolutely lose my mind in the process. I'm working on just sewing this top portion onto the top part of the dress. I'll show it later, it'll make sense. But I have to hand sew it because I didn't really make the greatest plans in the entire world for tacking this down. I clicked play on my phone to record a little bit and I just kind of looked at myself and I don't have any makeup on. My hair is gross. I just came back from a workout. I don't feel like I've put any effort into the way that I look today, but I feel very comfortable with just how I am right now. And I feel like that is so much progress from me even five years ago. I was that person who would always wear a full face of makeup and you would probably never even know that I had any self-confidence issues or acne or anything because I would just do the very, very, very best I could to come off as super confident and like happy and positive. But I would take my makeup off every single night and just be like, Ugh, she's not cute, you know? It's taken me a long long time to get here, but I'm literally filming myself and I'm gonna put this on the internet. Like people will see this. I mean, hopefully people will see this. That's great. I'm hoping that people will see this. I'm hoping that people will watch my videos. If the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, year old version of me could see this and know that first of all, we were gonna be confident enough to put pictures and videos of our face on the internet for other people to look at and be comfortable with that. Nonetheless, actually like my skin has very much cleared up over the years. A lot of that is because I don't have a lot of the stressors that I was suffering from <laughs> even just four or five years ago. But younger me I think would really appreciate the knowledge that eventually we'd get to the point where we're really comfortable sharing our story and sharing our experiences and sharing what we actually look like on the internet, like in public. Like 
I could, I would literally go to the grocery store or to the mall looking like this. That doesn't mean I'm a slob or anything. I don't feel like I'm gross, but 15, 16, 17 year old me felt gross looking like this, going to those places. I felt like I had to have a full face of makeup. I felt like I had to put my best outfits on and look a certain way. And I just have let a lot of that go. Part of that maybe just comes from maturing, but a big part comes from the fact that I've really been working on myself from the inside out over the past couple of years. And it's very liberating. I feel very good about where I'm at. I feel very good about where I'm going. And I don't know why I'm telling you guys any of this. Like you probably don't really care. So maybe this is more of like a message from me to me, but I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty freaking happy right now and have been happy for a while. I'm gonna tell my therapist about this <laughs> and she's gonna be like, that's great. I don't know what she'll say. She'll probably just be like, oh, you've been listening to Brene Brown. I love Brene Brown. None of you needed to know any of that. And if you did listen to the whole spiel, you now know me better than the majority of my friends and family. Congratulations. about how it turned out. It wears really, really well. It honestly travels really well. It does get a little bit wrinkly, but not too much. The zipper was fine the entire time I wore it. The fit is really, really nice. I like the silhouette on my body where it's like small on the bodice and waist and then kind of flares out at the bottom. I love these big long ties. Love the bow detail up on the shoulders. This top portion, like, I don't know who designed this because I did zero research on this. I literally just saw this on Pinterest and thought, that's the dress I want to get married in. We were originally going to elope and this was my plan, but then we ended up having like a small traditional wedding, which I'm so happy about. But I'm also really happy that I was finally able to make this dress because this is just like a simple dream. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support you guys give me and all the motivational comments that you leave down below. I read every single one of them and I am so grateful for you all. This is your formal invitation to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon and in this house, we craft in pajamas.